you mentioned before threshold and physiological norm. So talk to us about that. When this system is working well, these uh, LDL um, particles or any of these ApoB containing lipoproteins are sort of finding their way back to the liver and not ending up in the artery wall and depositing cholesterol and building up as plaque. Is that is that safe to say that when this system's working well and we're at a physiological norm level, that's not happening? Perfect. And I think early in my diatribe here, I mentioned physiological concentrations. If you we can keep these particles at the proper concentrations, they will perform exactly as I said they should because all of those machinations will happen. But if the ApoB particle concentration, and remember one ApoB per particle, if ApoB measurement in the blood exceeds a certain le level, there are more ApoB particles circulating than the liver is clearing. And as that number goes up and up and up, the particles are obviously not being cleared by the liver. So where do they go? We have miles and miles of endothelium on our arteries so they just pick the nearest artery and they crash it. And the ApoB particle carrying cholesterol, step one of atherogenesis is it passes through the endothelial lining, which is a one cell lining of every artery in our body. And now it's in the artery wall. And we can talk more about that later, but that's step one. But what forces the ApoB particle to go my joke is it's going to go where it's going to do illegal dumping. It's not going to the liver, which can get rid of the darn cholesterol safely. It's putting cholesterol in your artery wall. And the primary driving force is particle number, particle concentration. And this is why ApoB is by far the best metric that every human should get tested for when they do their cardiovascular risk assessments. Most of them get other lipid concentrations and we'll relate the two later on. But once your ApoB goes above a certain concentration, the chances are good it's going to crash your artery wall. There are other things that influence whether it goes into the artery wall or not, but it's particle number. Very few people who have physiologic numbers of ApoB particles ever get atherogenesis or atherosclerosis. And here's the bad news. You know, our little kids don't get much atherosclerosis that we know of. Some of them do nowadays because they're eating this junk earlier and early and getting fat and uh, insulin resistant at very young ages, which didn't happen earlier. But uh, these ApoB particles, if you took a five-year-old and measure his ApoB, it's 40 or 50 milligrams per deciliter. That's a physiologic. When we come out as infants, uh, it's 20 to 30 milligrams per deciliter. And by the way, when we come out of mom as little infants, our brains are fully developed and there is virtually little circulating cholesterol in that fetus while he was in the uterus and very little in the infant once he's born. Yet the brain keeps developing normally for several years, even though there's very little cholesterol in the ApoB particles in the brain. So there's another thing that tells you stop relating blood cholesterol to brain, whatever's going on in the brain or so. So now as you know, as we get older and older, you get into adolescence, puberty changes the concentrations of these things worse in men before women. So, uh, you know, sooner or later, ApoB may cross the threshold from which it has the ability to start crashing your artery wall. Now, listen, if you took a 14-year-old and he's got ApoB particles, unless this kid has astronomical levels as certain genetic lipid disorders, it would take three decades for enough ApoB particles to pollute his artery wall with cholesterol before he might show up with a positive coronary calcium test or even four decades before, like your dad, he suddenly gets chest pain and oh, while driving or doing something else. And this goes back to how we started off this thing. God, if we would just measure ApoB early in life, we would know, whoa, let's start a better lifestyle in this kid, some exercise, not let's start three drugs to get his ApoB under control. We would halt atherogenesis before it's ever even beginning. But most people don't do that. Most doctors don't check that in young people. So even though atherogenesis may be occurring, and God knows through all the wars we've been through and our young heroes get shot, killed, and autopsied, 
so many of these 18 to 22 year olds have significant non-clinical, meaning symptomless atherosclerosis in their arteries because ApoB has been crashing their artery walls for 18 to 22 years already. So uh, we got to recognize it early. But this is why one of the reasons why ApoB is considered causal, because it's a marker of the particle that is carrying cholesterol, which is actually the injurious molecule to the artery wall. But no cholesterol could ever get into your artery wall unless an ApoB particle dumps it in there. So this is why ApoB has gone to center stage with the best marker. And if we exceed whatever threshold you think is necessary, we'll start treating it and return it to those physiologic levels. And that's (laughs) therapeutic lipidology in a nutshell. So 40 to 50 milligrams per deciliter is the kind of concentration of of ApoB in young uh, humans. Yeah, and what, if they could what maintain is the threshold? that, they will virtually never have atherosclerosis. What do you think is the the kind of the tipping point threshold where you go from from a level of these ApoB containing lipoproteins that's not causing atherogenesis to where it's beginning to? A lot depends on what other risk factors is present in you. Now, if you had nothing else wrong with you but ApoB, it would take longer than if you were a smoker who was a diabetic, who was a hypertensive, the short, it'd be a much shorter time before you've got atherosclerotic plaque in your arteries. So here's the levels. In general, if there are not a bunch of other risk factors of concern, we like people to be in what's called the bottom 20th percentile population cut point. In other words, if we measured ApoB on every human on the planet, let me see the people who have an ApoB concentration that is in the lower 20th percentile. And that would be 80 milligrams per deciliter. So in general, unless you do have a multitude of other factors, if you're running around with an ApoB of 80, that's probably fine. Uh, It's going to be a long time. And sooner or later, you're going to eat wrong or start smoking or (laughs) secondary smoke. You don't want to, you want to be lower than the 20th percentile. But that's on average. You never want to be much higher than that. You certainly don't want to be above the 80th percentile because that's, and that's like 115, 120 milligrams per deciliter. Those are the people who most commonly get atherosclerotic heart disease. Are there people with super high ApoB who don't seem to get atherosclerosis? Uh, It's the biggest risk factor. It's causal. But yeah, there's always going to be an exception to the rule with human bodies. And what is preventing in my very small minority of people, horrendous ApoB causing, not causing atherosclerosis? Nobody knows. Uh, There must be other protective things going on. But nobody who's measuring their ApoB at age 30, 40, and says, oh, my ApoB is 140. I ain't worried about it because I'm good. I'm healthy. I can do 50 push-ups a day. I actually did a coronary calcium and there's no calcium. Well, that's good. You probably got another five, 10 years where nothing's going to happen to you. But if you're 30 and 40 and you want to see 90, I wouldn't go 50 years with an ApoB that's sky high because there would be zero data supporting that that is safe. 